What's up guys, welcome to episode three of the USG show. Pretty excited to have our first guest, Andrew Stone. Thank you for Glad being here, man. Yeah. Uh, Andrew and I are really good friends at Virginia Tech. Um, back in the day, met on the, the cheerleading team. Yeah. <laughs> Never, did you ever expect you'd be on the cheerleading team at Virginia Tech? That was probably my last thing I expected, yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were both football hopefuls at Tech. Um, but now you're kind of living living the dream a little bit with football. My personal dream, yeah. After, right? Yeah. Afterwards there, getting involved with some uh, some really cool programs here. So um, basically, yeah, Andrew has a, a bunch of different talents and abilities here, and he's a lot, some awesome experiences we just wanted to share with you all. Um, just something to talk about, you know, shoot the, uh, shoot the S about uh, lifting, fitness, football, conditioning, all this good stuff. And if you guys have any questions, definitely drop them here because we're gonna uh, try to answer some questions here for y'all. So just a quick background, Andrew. Um, where, you know, as far as you know, growing up and getting into school, you know, give us a little bit of a taste of a background, like what, you know, that, that whole kind of origin story there. Um, you know, what, what led you to tech and what were you doing there? Sure, so uh, I grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, Played sports my whole life, mostly golf, wrestling, and baseball were the big three. There we go. There we go. Uh, growing up, just loved sports. Got into the weight room for like my real first time going into my freshman year of high school. Our baseball coach was also kind of our high school strength coach. Cool. I remember our first summer training session. We lifted. And I couldn't walk for two weeks straight, and I was like, something about this. I love it. Was it your typical like high school weight room that was like, I don't know, it was good energy but like bad, bad lifting, or was uh, it pretty good? It's a little different because our, our strength coach knew what he was doing. Cool. He was a professional bodybuilder, That's did everything. Super important. Um, and he taught us, and but typical weight room in terms of look, just a couple racks, random pieces of equipment go. from everywhere. Some weights all over the floor. Kind of yeah. Um, <laughs> and I actually did this program called Leadership Workshop where I met a friend of mine, um, and she was like, hey, after workshop or in the fall, we're going to Virginia Tech to a football game. Cool. My family's going if you want to come. I was like, sure, why not? I've never been there. Get there, go into the stands. Jump Tanner Sandman, sold. Just chills. That was it. Chills everywhere. Chills. Ate dining hall food the next day. I mean, it was it was a, an absolute go from there. And so from there, I only had one choice, and it was Virginia Tech. So that's awesome, man. Went there, became a cheerleader. There we go. Through, through a mutual friend, uh, Met Courtney me. Tala. Yeah, yeah. Met Joe, um, and cheered for four years. And within those four years, kind of how I got acclimated to the world of strength conditioning. Sure. Sure, this is when you started like you started powerlifting during those four years, right? Like, yeah, I'd say it's my junior year of college. Cool, cool. Yeah. So this week was we got to use the facilities, the athletic facilities, yeah. and oh, they yeah. were freaking gorgeous. I remember your what you came in, that was the first year we got to use like the the, the upgraded. That was the brand new weight room then. Oh, yeah. The place was amazing. That's a new Just, one like, even since then. Really? I don't know if you've seen that. I'm, yeah. I'm seeing the new new one, so yeah. that's awesome. Let me pause real quick. I just want to make sure that everything's focused here and still good. Cool. Last time we like recorded halfway through and it like dipped out focus and it was great. Um No, that's that's awesome. Uh what yeah, I guess we got we got a taste of like powerlifting through like our, our weightlifting coaches and our training style, training yeah. style and that yeah. kind of thing. And then, uh, yeah, no, that's awesome. What, you started competing junior year at yeah, that kind of thing? I think that, if I remember correctly, yeah, it was 2015. Cool. First competition, Brute Strength Gym, SPF yeah. meet. Yeah. Nasty squat and deadlift especially. What, you pulled 740? 755 is the best pull. 755. Uh, best squat, 675. And under 200 pounds, right? Uh, a little over 200. A little over 200. Yeah. It's pretty insane, so that's awesome, man. Um, well, cool. And so, what were you studying at Tech then? So originally, it started out I wanted to be a teacher, okay. and so I had the love for education and teaching, and I bounced back and forth between biology teacher, a math teacher, business at one point, right. um, and eventually started to grow into the oh, exercise is fun. I really enjoy it. Oh, you can learn about exercise and right. teach exercise. Um, so I switched to human nutrition, food and exercise, or as Virginia Tech people call it, H and F E. Um, and finish that program out. Cool. And then you went back to school. At, Correct. At Tech still. Yeah. So I completed my undergrad. I did a year completely of volunteer internship in addition to working at the Virginia Tech Inn okay. as a as a bellboy. Nice. Um, and then was able to go back Lift, for lifting master suitcases. school. Lifting suitcases. Yeah. Putting smiles on people's faces. Here we go. Um, went back for two years of a master's degree. Um, finished that at Tech as well. And master's in H and F E. 
No, master's was actually in instructional technology, so it's in the College of Education, master's okay. in education. Oh, yep. cool. Cool. Yep. Cool. And so you interned with just like the athletic program? Yeah, so technically it was called, Oli or it's called Olympic sports, so that pretty much all that means is everybody besides basketball and football. So okay. your wrestling, your baseball, your softballs, sure. whatever. All sports um, that play in, no, football yeah. plays in Olympics. Yeah, some. Just, uh, whatever, however they qualify it, you know. In addition to that, I was going downstairs to where our football weight room was and asking okay. how much I could help or just shadow or be there. Right, um, right. So I was doing that as well. Let's scoot this back real quick. Sorry guys, try to get a little more angle, better angle here. There we go, a little better. Gotcha. I'll snuggle up. Dang it, almost there. Uh, uh, there we go. Um, cool, it's cool. So, as far as like getting these opportunities to get involved with the football program, you definitely had to like be proactive about that. You like Absolutely. you attacked it, um, kind of searched out the right contacts, yep. started making net connections. We talked about this earlier, just like connections, everything. I feel like and so the more people you can know and network with, yeah, the more opportunities are going to present themselves. You can't just be passive and like let things come to you for Absolutely. sure. So, um, cool. So you finished at Tech, then you got, how long were you there at Tech then after your master's? So I actually had to leave before I finished my master's. Okay. So I got the opportunity to intern with the Carolina Panthers for their for their last season, uh, and that started April 1st. So I'm I actually sure had to leave were, a little early. You were pumped. I was, I was bummed I had to leave a little early, <laughs> okay. um, but pumped for the experience. That's, um, That's awesome. Did you get like a call, your email, how'd that work? So I saw an application and kind of got through word of mouth that Okay. There was an internship opportunity. Finally saw the application, applied. You cool. had to submit a video, teaching lifts, uh, uh, go through an interview process, and finally, I think it was right around my birthday, I got the call. I was like, hey, we would love to have you. Nice. Um, you just were freaking out. I was pumped. <laughs> I was very pumped. <laughs> that was super cool. I mean, so I started that April 1st and finished pretty much December 31st. Gotcha. That's awesome, It was man. fun. The season? I can't remember the season. It was pretty good. Started good. Cool. And then we had a lot of injuries and um, a coaching change towards the end of the season, which doesn't usually happen, but it did. Um, I didn't watch much football this past year. Yeah, that's year. okay. So it just been <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the season we were expecting for sure, but it's cool, and I hate to say it's cool, but it was very eye-opening to be in that experience of seeing a coaching change, seeing how yeah. players react to injuries, so on and so forth. Yeah. How do you relax? Well, if you just have like a perfect season and you winning and whatever, you don't see the you don't actual see the like, downside of things. The drama yeah. and yeah. the politics exactly. that everyone has to has to play a part of and everything. So I definitely can see that. Um, cool. So and now you just got an offer. Well, now not more than an offer. You're there now, currently working yep. at Memphis University of Memphis with the football program. Yep. That's sick. That's super cool. Yeah, it's fun. Fun. Um, what are some so some differences? So now you're coaching, you coach you're helped with the strength and conditioning on, on the pro level. Yep. Um, and now you're working more. So it's kind of a little bit of promotion. You're at a higher level. Sure. Because you were an intern, right? As, as at the Panthers. Season long intern, yeah. So now, and now you're more of an assist, you're actually an assistant coach. Assistant now. full time strength coach. So yeah. that's awesome. So a uh, bit of upgrade as far as like responsibilities. What's what's changed for you? Some of the biggest ones, and just this is just a difference between professional. And collegiate athletics in general, mm -hmm. is in the professional world, you're not as much of a coach, you're more of like a co-worker. So, gotcha. I mean, these are professional players, they don't... And, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they're making millions of dollars right. to play football. You don't just get to go in and tell them what to do. And most of them are most of them are older than I am, making more money than I'll ever see in my entire life. And insane, uh, absolute freaks of nature anyway. So. Crazy <laughs> genetics, I mean, crazy athletic feats of... You can't even explain, but... Um, at the same time, they're also dads and right. brothers and stuff that they have so much stuff going on outside of the building you have no idea right but the biggest difference is being that co-worker instead okay I know your job is not to bench as much as you can or to squat as much as you can we just need you to be healthy for Sundays right. and to keep you healthy every Sunday um, so that's a big difference in college where you are a coach figure you some a dad figure to some or a bigger yeah, brother you're older figure. than and all you're of them older at that than point, all right? exactly so. Um, in addition to that, you're a big culture creator. That's one of your biggest things. You're an extension of your head coach and the coaching staff sure. and the culture they want to create with that program. So cool. there's definitely a lot of differences and differences in training and um, kind of the whole scheme. It's much more different than people expect it to be. Yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. Um, 
real quick, guys. Anyone watching? Yeah, we only have one. Everyone kind of hopping on and off. But if you do have any questions for Andrew as far as getting into strength and conditioning or lifting or fitness in general, definitely drop them. We'll get to them. Um, cool. So, do you have a, a preference? I mean, yeah, yeah I know. What, what have you enjoyed more, do you think? Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure I've been asked this question a lot. It's they're tough. different, right? It's, very, very different. different environments. So. I think there's pros and cons to both. Um, I think in the the spot I'm at now and the age I'm at now, I would say my preference right now is the collegiate level because of the relationships you can build with athletes. And the pros, you might have an athlete come for a week, you get signed for a week, and then he gets cut at the end of the week. Dang. So the relationship building isn't quite there. You're not as as much invested in their life unless right. you know. And they're much more around. superstars too, where it's not. It's, it's harder to make a different friends. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just regular yeah. friendships, probably. But in college, you're part of their life. You get to yeah, yeah. build that relationship. Uh, get to see most of the guys for four or five years, depending yeah. on when they leave. That's um, cool. That's really and that's cool. cool. Just seeing the guys progress through their time at your university or college or whatever. Um, but I think for right now, just the way you get to build relationships in college is kind of my driving factor towards that. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, I guess like the biggest value question I get asked right now is like for people watching and they want to get involved in this kind of thing, like what's some, I know again, probably a million things you could say as far as like advice and stuff, but how would you approach it? You said, I got obviously like having a background with, sure. you know, having personal knowledge with lifting and stuff yep. is a big help doing majoring in something that was relevant. Um, but you know, what are some, maybe some other tips or advice for people trying to get on this path, you know, whether it be interning with, uh, you know, strength and conditioning programs on various sports teams and eventually like professional sure, teams sure. And, and high level college teams and stuff. What, what do you got for, for some people looking to do that? The biggest and number one thing I can say is just get experience. So first and foremost, you're not going to come straight into this field, find a full time job and scoot along. It doesn't right. work that way. Right. In this field, it's very much about, just like you said earlier, who you know, but also importantly, who knows you. Yeah. So, number one thing, like you said, is getting the background and your education, but at the same time, is getting experience. So, yeah. find a volunteer internship. And volunteer doesn't mean it has to be paid. Volunteer means no pay. Right. So, uh, find an experience opportunity that you can go learn from somebody smarter than you. Right. Um, and then when you get there, work your tail off. Yeah. Show that you want to be there. Show, make it look like you're getting paid a million dollars to be there. Um, let's say that's number one. Just get experience, but also when you get to that opportunity or to that experience, take full advantage of it. Mm -hmm. The people you're around, ask a ton of questions. Ask questions all the time. Um, try to keep learning, whether that's reading stuff online, asking questions, trying stuff yourself, right. writing mock programs or doing different things, talking to athletes, building relationships, whatever it may be. Just take full advantage of that. Um, and second is just continue to reach out to strength coaches all over. I, when I was at Tech and going through my masters, I would email different strength coaches from all over the country. I have a full list of all the coaches I emailed, whether they responded or not. But I would just say, hey, coach, find something very personal about them. I've been following you for a long time. Would love to pick your brain. Right. And you'd be surprised how open strength coaches are to be like, absolutely, give me a call. Sure. Well, it's especially guys who are coaching like that and who have that knowledge. I mean, just like I see it all over, especially like the the ones in a lot of leadership positions are often the ones who are wanting to absolutely. give that knowledge, absolutely. and they like people who you know that stuff. They want to yep. give and want to pass on to people who are eager to learn. And probably yep. showing that initiative too gets, exactly. excites them. So like, hey, here's a guy who wants to learn and he wants exactly. to pick my brain, and I'm gonna you know everyone wants to give off that knowledge yep. that they have. I mean, the worst you're gonna get is not a response. Right. Right. And I mean, no one's gonna say screw you or move on. Right. And even if they um, do, you can't. You then know, you just move on. Just, exactly. <laughs> Thick skin um, there and so just take initiative, <laughs> cool. work your butt off, get experience, get a lot of it. I mean, I went through uh, an internship, a GA, I was even interning with football uh, during my GA summers, mm -hmm. and then I had to go back down to, uh, technically it goes intern GA full time, Yeah. but I had to intern GA, intern again, GA, and then go back down to an intern right. So with some humi humility there, right? You gotta like, you gotta not worry about your position title exactly. so much. It's yeah. about, yeah. like you said, where can I get the most experience and what, exactly. where can I get any kind of experience? Yeah. Where, where are my, any opportunities available? Exactly. Cool. How much did, as far as like your lifting experience, did you find that was a big help in, not necessarily like getting the positions, but as far as once you're in that position, do you find you, people respected you more because you could put some weight up yep. and like I mean as far as and then you're just overall knowledge of like lifting in general do you find that was a big sure. help 
Yeah, I think no doubt. So one of the big reasons I got into strength conditioning in the first place was, I want to say it was my sophomore year, I fractured my L5 cheerleading. I don't know if it was technically from cheerleading, it was kind of a chronic thing. Um, so in the weight room, I had a lot of modifications. I couldn't squat, I had to belt squat, and so on and so forth. So I gained a really strong relationship with my strength coach at the time, Coach Randall. And just through that relationship, I was like, wow, I would love to be in her shoes someday. Yeah. And so building that relationship, I was like, I would love to teach and be in that position. And so I started to fulfill it more and look at it. Um, and that's what made me seek strength conditioning in the first place. Right. But kind of getting to your question, uh, my love for powerlifting and lifting, and being a cheerleader, you're not the most respected guy in the room when you're uh, a male cheerleader walking around. Right. <laughs> so even though we were putting up some yeah, weight, and exactly. I mean, you'd be surprised, but uh, my lifting kind of helped, and kind of like you're phrasing it, give me a little more credibility. It's like, sure. oh, he's not just telling me to squat because that's what the book says. Right. He's doing it himself. He's telling me to squat lower. Squatting. He, yeah, he's I'm telling you to squat lower. And yeah. Squatting. Uh, exactly. And even in the pros, they're like, oh, okay, you didn't play college football. No, I didn't, but. What I do care about is your health and well-being, and I'm lifting to well, show you. Well, you're also not there to teach football. You're there I'm to get them stronger exactly. and condition them. So exactly. Having that credibility, so, I'm sure, plays yeah, a Yeah, I part. think it does help a good bit. And sure. Some of the guys get into it, and some of the athletes that work with, and it's like, oh, crap, well, how was your power team meet last weekend, or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but then you just got to make sure you turn around. It's not, The biggest thing in this field is it's not about you. It's about everybody else around you. Sure, sure. Probably build the confidence, too, like walking into weight room, you may have knowledge, but if you don't have the practical application, and like I've sure. noticed even just like coaching, getting into coaching myself here and everything, like I've learned a lot more almost just through the coaching aspect of things. Um, like you can read a lot of books and you can like understand a lot of concepts, but explaining it to someone in a practical 100%. thing that someone, it, to make it click, to give them the special cue for their body type that makes exactly. them understand it and put their yep. back in the right position. Like, it's a completely different game. Yep. So you definitely need the, the, the experience. I'm sure both like a lot of confidence yep. and stuff. Um, I think we do have an actual question Looks real like quick here. On there. See? Played ball in college and the biggest thing I saw was the amount of injuries that we had. How do you attack injury prevention? Oh, injury Balance, prevention. Bosu balls? <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say that's a phrase getting thrown around a little too much nowadays. Core stabilization. Uh, biggest thing is it's a good one. There, there's no prevention. Right. I, I think no matter what, you're never gonna prevent injuries. It's a part of the game, whether it's like a contact sport or not. Um, the biggest thing I believe the weight room does is reduce your risk to injury. Right. Um, there's the risk is always gonna be there. Because there's, there's a million variables and a million 100%. ways you can get. The weather, the temperature, who you're hurt. playing against, right. what your day has been, did you sleep last night, whatever. That all plays into it, and people don't realize that. All stress goes into the same bucket. Sure. Um, in terms of prevention, I think it more just comes down to, kind of like you're saying, when teaching and explaining right. to your group of guys or group of athletes hey this is why we do it okay we're gonna squat to make our, our quads and our, our hamstrings stronger so we have a less likely risk of tearing an ACL right whatever it may be um, but I think we need to kind of get away from as a culture and a society of injury prevention I okay. think we're just reducing the risk of injury kind of making us a little more bulletproof in a sense sure and then um, if you do get injured you're able to bounce back and then you're faster, bounced back quicker you're and then, yeah. your injury might not be as severe if it were if you weren't training right yeah no, yeah. that's a good question. Never gonna prevent everything, and um, can do the best best you can to prepare for exactly. Like, but it's, there's a million million variables. You can get the healthiest guy you can get hit at the right moment, exactly. And everything and um, even like a bad night of sleep could affect. I don't know. There's like so many yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, that, every that little it. thing. You're, you and your girlfriend broke up. That throws stress into your bucket too, and right. everything goes downhill. From your that, nervous so. system is fatigued from that yeah. at, whatever so um, I've seen some interesting stuff I don't know what you if I, I need to I don't have the studies on it or anything right now but like interesting studies that like the whole bad form like uh, con like people like oh you have a rounded back on your deadlift and that's bad form and you're gonna get hurt eventually that kind of stuff like but that bad form actually isn't like the leading cause of injuries exactly. it's usually yeah. it's, it's 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 load management yep. and um, load and fatigue management and that actually Poor management of those factors is what the, the actual the yep. cause of most injuries, not necessarily bad form and this yeah. f everyone freaking out about like yeah. 
your spine is slightly out of position. It's like yeah. if you actually train in that position, your back is really strong in that position, exactly. even though it's bad form. It's, it might not be most efficient form. It might be the most efficient way to lift something. But yeah. um, I always thought that was really interesting. Just I know so the like, guys over at Barbell Medicine do a ton of information yeah. on that. Their that's our, yeah, I think that's where I got that yeah. original stuff from. And I need to like look into that more and get get my data points and stuff. But it is really interesting because it's yeah. like there's definitely a balance to. I mean, it's kind of changing subject, but on the lines of injuries, like that balance of like perfectionism versus just getting stronger yeah. and always striving to be to have a perfect lift sure always sure. striving to have that neutral back you know that kind of stuff yeah. but like not freaking out when yeah. you do lose form and when you do lose you know and more more uh, being you know more importance on like recovery and and understanding your body and load management sure. and fatigue yep. and all that good stuff yep um which i definitely need to get better at for sure <laughs> which i'm sure everyone everyone can improve on that kind of stuff so. no doubt anyway if there's any more questions drop them below and we can we can get to them but um that's kind of all you know all i have right now um but anything any other any other words of wisdom to pass on what's what's next what are you what are you hoping to do i, I don't know what's next just kind of one of the, uh, I think a strength coach said this once, is just kind of make the big time where you're at. So yeah. wherever, you, wherever you are, sure. be there. So That's cool. being present where I'm at, um, and if other opportunities come down, down the line, you got to look at them, what's best for you in the sure. long run. And um, Do you have a long-term goal? Is there like a dream position you would love to have? I don't know if there's like a specific, specific position. I would. My end goal is to be a head strength conditioning coach for a football program yeah. eventually. Professional? Um, I don't know. Uh, either at the collegiate or professional level. Um, like you said, there's some big differences there. So very like, different. Yeah, very different. I feel like at a at a at a college, you as a head head training conditioning coach, you really are like a father figure there. Yeah. And, just, like, and you spend super almost double the amount of time with the athletes than the position coaches do, which most people don't mm -hmm. realize. You can be with them 100 percent of the time. The position coaches have very specific times it can be. Interesting. Yeah. But, That's um, cool. So no. Any other? If I have any other words of wisdom. It's one of my favorite quotes, and it comes from Inky Johnson, if anybody's ever followed him. I'm not sure if you've ever seen his videos. I'm sure I have. But, uh, and I've kind of used this for myself, is that the saying goes, perspective drives performance. How you view what you do will always determine how you do what you do. So, regardless of what your position, if you're a volunteer intern in strength conditioning, right. or you're a full-time strength coach, or you're owning your new gym, or starting a new gym, I mean, how you view what you do is always going to affect how you do what you do. So right. Be confident in what you're doing. Put 100% effort into it. Have fun into with it, it, regardless of what it is, and right. keep going forward. Yep. Cool, man. I love it. Well, thank you. Dude. Appreciate it. First, first guest on the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Um, have a safe trip on the, the the rest of your trip up to Maryland, right? Yeah. So, um, let us know who else you guys want to have on. Some other Q and A's for us or for other guests or whatever. Let, let let's see what the topics you guys want to see, and hopefully, kind of keep the show growing. So, thanks everybody, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. Later.